Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on meshing an engine nacelle. The goal is to mesh the nacelle inside a spherical domain with boundary layer clustering. In this video, we will be looking into the following in detail. 1. Importing a geometry into the CAD panel. 2. Meshing and exporting the surface in dryer format. 3. Setting boundary layer clustering to the surfaces. Let's start with the loading geometry operation. The step file from the working directory is loaded into the UI by clicking on the load button from the CAD panel. You can also load an IGS or step file in Gridboard GUI using file import geometry and click on respective format which will load it into the CAD panel directly. To mesh this geometry, open the mesh dialog box by clicking on the mesh button in the tools section. Select the quality mesh option and modify the values as shown. Almost all the options are self-explanatory. For detailed information on each option, please refer chapter 7 of WSGUI manual. The surface triangulation looks optimal. The cap faces can be switched off to have a better view of the mesh. In general, if the capture of the curvature is adequate, we may not need to remesh. To save and export the surface mesh in dryer format, click on export dropdown and select load as surface option. This converts the mesh to dryer format and loads it into the surface panel. To view the cross section of the geometry, I am clipping the view with respect to the work plane along Z axis. The first step is to prepare the geometry for meshing. The surface has sloped discontinuities, which can be split based on the angle to design better grid patterns. One of the options to split is by splitting the geometry into different surfaces based on the feature angle. As a part of preparation, we can set the boundary layer clustering parameters for these surfaces. Once applied, it will be reflected in the output grid. Setting first cell height to the surface reduces the effort in using the tool as a post process, especially if you want to generate a family of grids. Similarly, setting the boundary layer parameters one by one for all the surfaces. Now we can create the far field boundary by choosing any of the surface options. Here I am choosing to create a spherical far field domain using the parameter shown. Looks like we are all set with the geometry preparation. Let's move to the topology building process. I will be building the topology using bottom up approach. The geometry's cross section is rotationally symmetric. So the topology strategy can be to build a 2D cross sectional wireframe and rotate it to form 3D blocks. Two D faces are created for a cross section as shown here. To create an overgrid around the geometry, the corners are being grouped and wrapped as shown. Notice that the highlighted region is having an obtuse angle. The 2D grid of the same would look like this. The grid can be improved better by modifying the structure as shown here. And the corresponding grid would look like this. The highlighted lines display the desired flow of the grid lines. In 3D, such modifications can be done using wrap function. Since it's a 2D cross section, it can be modified manually as shown here. The assignment of edges to its respective surfaces can either be done now or after rotating the wireframe to 360 degree. Since the assignments will be carried forward to other cross sections while rotating it, I am choosing to assign it in 2D to ease the process.
To create 3D blocks, rotate the faces to 360 degree using Rotate Faces option. Enter the parameters as shown and click Apply to create the blocks. Center is user defined 0 5 0 along x axis for an angle of 360 degree with 16 number of copies. Please note that in order to avoid the edges being cut across the geometry, 16 number of copies are used. However, these blocks can be reduced at grid level by merging them together. Then linking the corners at the center to form the blocks. Next step is to extend the outer layer of this topology to the far field. Grouping all the outer faces of the existing wireframe. and wrapping the same to form the blocks for Farfetch. To position it closer to the spherical domain, click on apply with the default values and use the slider to adjust the wrap ratio. Now that the topology is built for the entire domain, the next step is to assign the faces to the Farfetch domain. All the surfaces are assigned to its respective faces. Let's check the validity of the topology. The topology has some quality issues and the fixes to use the internal surface to freeze the block faces. Notice that the locations are highlighted in aqua color. The internal surfaces are already created for each location. To load them into the UI, click on Load Surfaces and select them in the File dialog box. Video for this internal surfaces creation will be uploaded soon. Since the grid has to be generated on either side of the internal surfaces, the orientation of the surfaces has to be changed to two-sided using the right-click menu on the surface. Let's group and assign the respective faces to all the internal surfaces. Checking the validity once again. As mentioned, wrap the faces to resolve the singularity. Since the corners are in the volume, the wrap has to be done using the internal faces option. Group the assignments of the internal surfaces and wrap them internally as shown. Now the topology is valid without any singularities. The next step is to reduce the high aspect ratio blocks by splitting the blocks and modifying the densities as desired.
Let's start the gridding process. The gridding process is not shown in this video due to time constraint. The output grid is being loaded into the UI. The grid is smooth and the geometry is also captured as expected. Note that there are 3056 blocks in the grid. This can be reduced using merge button which will be explained in a separate video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel to get updates on new videos.